That boy got the fresh cut on him, folks. Yeah, yes, you know, yes, sir. Let me see that cut. Uh, Ooh, that boy fresh. Yeah, boy, that, that boy got. Oh, that boy got. I had to make sure I look good. I had to worship till I pass out today. Hey, man. you know, you know that boy say he got a purity ring in his dread. <laughs> <laughs> you know that boy say. <laughs> <laughs> that boy say I ain't even gonna put the purity ring on my finger. I'm gonna put it in my dread. I'm gonna put it in my hair, man. We are gonna represent the king up top, man. Hallelujah! <laughs> Come on. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for these, these men, Lord God, these mighty men of God, Lord God, who serve you, who love you, who are just desperately seeking you in a way uh, that honors you, Lord, desperately seeking you in a way that acknowledges that we need you, Lord God. We thank you for your grace um, that you have given us, Lord God, to, uh, to open our eyes, your special grace, Lord God, that has opened our eyes and showed us that we are in need of you. We're in need of learning about you. We're in need of knowing you. We are just in need of you, Lord God. And you have given us the ability to see uh, that we need you and that we need a savior, Lord God. So we thank you in Jesus name for everybody on this line, everybody who's gonna see this, everybody who's gonna be touched by it, who's gonna be blessed by it. And so God, we thank you today, Lord God. We come to you all as students today, Lord God, to learn your word. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen, and amen. Hallelujah. Amen. Come on. So for the most part, everybody knows who I am, but I'll just introduce myself. I'm Uncle Reese, uh, been a gospel artist for some while. Uh, I am semi-retired, uh, just been enjoying myself. Uh, God has been good to me and uh, my family. And um Man, I'm grateful, and like I say, I'm honored to to do this, man. I'm honored to share uh, with you guys uh, a little bit that I've learned. Don't know everything in the world, but what I do know, I know pretty well. So, um, honored to be here today. Um, when I was, uh, I reached out to 1K Few, who, like, I honor this man. I, I love this man. Met him when you were, I think I met you when, were you 15, 16? So yeah, probably younger than that. But yeah, about sixteen. Yeah, about fifteen. Yeah, probably. Yeah, you know what? It would have been younger than that. And uh, just reached out to my management. Um, we did a song together. Um, that was a blessing. That's the first time we did a song together. Just met this guy, loved on him. Uh, we've done about three songs together, and I just reached out to him just because we have a relationship. We stay in contact, and uh, he told me about this opportunity to just that they're doing a Bible study. So I'm just so proud of y'all for wanting to learn more about God. Um, a lot of Christian artists, just if we be honest, a lot of Christian artists I'm learning, you know, haven't read the word, like don't read the Bible. Don't really do things like this. And, you know, Christian rap, we all are Christian rappers on this line. So we know like it started off just very legalistic, uh, very legalistic, very much rule following, very much just shunning people for being themselves and especially for being Negroes, you know, just if we be honest, like shunning everything that is that is us as far as and so and then, you know, goes from there to being hurt, the pain to just kind of abandoning the church in general in the process of the way that God designed for us into community, develop the to come and develop theology in community. So that's just kind of been dissipated. So now you went from one extreme to now having the extreme where, you know, I talk to Christian rappers and I'm like, hey, when last time you been in your word? They like, word. And the only word I do is when I rap, you know, I just I just do what I feel. So to to have a group of people that are that I consider uh at the cusp of this thing and wanting to have a Bible study, man, I'm just, I'm so encouraged. I'm so honored. I'm just, I'm happy to know that this is the conversation. These are the topics uh, that are happening behind the scenes. And a lot of your fans don't really understand that this is what is going on again. So hand, pat y'all on the back. Everybody just pause. Just pat yourself on the back, y'all. <laughs> For real, pat yourself on the back. <laughs> Boy, look here. I'm so proud of y'all, but I was nervous for a while, but <laughs> <laughs> from when y'all came to, 
And y'all know the devil busy because when y'all came to Jacksonville, we went to the beach and right. two dudes ran up on 10 of us. Not for real. That's true. That's true. Demon, I believe they were demon. Something was wrong with them boys. Right. Like, that's never happened to me in my life. Right. Two people run up on us and be like, us two versus y'all 10. And bro, I ain't going to lie, I was a little scared. I was a little, I little nervous. We were, we were scared for them. <laughs> that's what I'm saying. No, I yeah. was scared. I was I was scared because I ain't know what y'all gonna jump them while I'm there. Like, we, that, was, <laughs> that was one of those, that was one of those situations where that was obviously the devil. Like yeah. gotta be. obviously, like yeah, we had, gotta we be. had to let that we go because yeah. it was too it was too evident that that was what going on. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I be a real boy. I ain't know what y'all were gonna do, but I was like, Lord, I'm gonna try to. Make sure my face ain't on this camera when y'all beat these boys to death. <laughs> that's what I'm gonna make sure. We're gonna keep you out the way. We're gonna keep you playing. We're gonna keep you behind. Uh, you. Hallelujah. <laughs> but I was I was so proud that y'all ain't beat them boys to death because boy, that would have been the perfect opportunity to let some steam off. Right. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh so I am encouraged. And so um as I was thinking about this, and I was like, God, like, what can I tell these guys? that I feel like will help them. And immediately I felt the Holy Spirit saying, well, it's not what you can tell them, it's what they need to hear. And so I've just been sensitive to the voice of God. And uh, I asked 1K a question uh, that I believe sparked uh, this this opportunity. Asked him, I said, 1K, what are the felt needs of your community? Like what are the felt needs of the community? Um, I've been I've been a youth pastor for about eight months and the church that I'm a part of is Potter's House in Jacksonville. Uh, We employed two hundred and seventy people. Uh, We have a food bank. Our church has a has a um, we have an auto mechanic shop that gives free oil changes and breaks to single mothers. Like if you if you're a mother and you come there, we don't charge you like. We have box trucks at our church that if you live within a 15 mile radius of the church, if you need help moving, we will come and move you for free. That's hard. Um, today, uh, today, every Tuesday and every Thursday, we feed about 600 people uh, with our food banks. Uh, we also employ over 100 convicted felons that can't work nowhere else. So when you come to the Potter's house and you come to the bistro, people are like, man, the service is really bad. Well, that's because Raynard just got out of prison five days ago and he work here. <laughs> like we have security, like we have a shopping mall where we have a bowling alley. Uh, we have all these resources for the community. But we tell people security is at the mall, but it ain't for you. It is to protect you from the people that work there. Right. Had this situation, um, met a guy outside the church and, you know, I, I be packing people up, man, when I first started working there and had a situation with this guy uh, that I, you know, I was like, you know what, what, what should I do? And so instead of packing them up, I was just like, hey, bro, you know, you can't post up outside the employee entrance because people have been robbed. Like two people got robbed at my church, like two months ago, like I'm talking about robbed at gunpoint. So this is the environment that I work in. And instead of packing them up, you know, because I got in trouble for packing people up and my pastor then called me in the office and was like, hey, bro, like you ain't security, dog. You can't, we don't, we don't get down like that. So, so now I'm like, okay, cool. So I see this guy outside and I'm like, hey, my brother, are you hungry? I took him to our restaurant. We have a restaurant. We have a bistro that uh, we have a we have a restaurant that makes over seven million dollars a year. Um, just a God thing. And so I take him to the restaurant and I'm like, bro, you hungry? I get him something to eat. He like, man, you can get my mom something too. You know, I know the dude line. So I, but I get him I get him another plate and um, and I end up taking him home. And uh, man, to be honest, cuz end up trying like straight trying me like I was a buster. And uh and I had to let him know like hey, I'm not that type of person. Um but in correcting him and challenging him, I end up inviting him to church. Uh, I end up taking care of the situation, uh end up inviting him to church and 
that situation really sparked something in me. And it, it caused me to realize this. What are the felt needs of my community? My church, we're not, we don't have conferences at my church. We not, we don't bring in people like that. And, you know, we bring in people sometimes, but we meet the felt needs of the community. That is at the forefront of our ministry. And so as I was praying and I was asking God, what can I say to these guys? He was like, Jesus did ministry well. Like he wasn't just the son of God. He wasn't just the Messiah. He wasn't just our savior because if it was just about innocent blood being shed on the cross, this is how I think. I'm like, well, why we just ain't hit Jesus in the head with a rock when he was a baby? Job done, right? Yeah. If it's about somebody dying that don't deserve it, Jesus didn't have sin in his life even when he was a baby. We could have just hit him in the head with a rock. Job done, right? Hey. But he had to fulfill those prophecies. Of course, we understand. But Jesus showed us how to walk out ministry. Jesus met the felt needs of his community. Like there were so many times when Jesus, he, he was doing something else. But one person changed the trajectory of his entire day. There's a, there's a scripture um, in Matthews, or there's a scripture in Matthews, and, and you guys can, I'm not going to fully read it, but, um, but if you, I mean, if uh, Matthews, I love the gospel, uh, but it's just, it's just such a thing. But anyway, um, in Matthews chapter 14, um, it talks about how John got beheaded. This is Jesus's cousin. Uh, that got beheaded. And so you can imagine losing a cousin, losing somebody that's dear to you. Um, that's a, that's a heavy thing. And it says, if you look at Matthews 14 and 13, and I'm reading uh, in Tony Evans uh, Bible that he wrote, it says, when Jesus heard about it, it's talking about John the Baptist. He withdrew from there by boat to a remote place to be alone. Jesus was hurt that his cousin died. And so he withdrew to be alone. And it says, but when the crowds heard this, they followed him on foot from the towns. When he went ashore, he saw a large crowd. And it's what I want y'all to see. He had compassion on them and healed their sick. So in a moment, where Jesus is so sad that he has to retreat by boat. And this is his time to really just reflect on his pain. Mm -hmm. But he sees a crowd that came from out of town to see what, to see him. And not just because, you know, he's the Messiah, but, he, his, his life was so impactful that people came from out of town to see him. Is this not us? Is this not like we look at, sometimes we take who we are for granted. Like we take the fact that God has given us gifts. He's given us songs that people have chosen to like, or he's, he's given you favor with, 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 with people that have platforms that share their platforms to you. And I keep having this conversation with people. And I'm like, dog, we're not famous. We're not bothered by fame. We're not bothered by notoriety. We get to be famous. We get to be known. Like, it's a privilege to be known because 99% of people that do what we do, boy, when they go live, it be four people on there, boy. Yeah. And three of them phones be them. <laughs> boy. <laughs> But don't nothing hurt my heart when you got a homeboy that, that you you see that thing so and so going live and you click on there and you see you the only person in there. <laughs> but boy, they preaching, they preaching they hard out, and then oh, they, and then they shoot you a shout out. So you like, dang, I can't leave. <sighs> Ooh, so you got to just you got to just put your phone down and go do something else. <laughs> and every once in a while, you got to tap those little hearts as fast as you can. 
Wow. <laughs> be wild. To be known is a privilege. Bro, you know, we know what it's like, bro. Like, we weren't born with no daddy in the industry, bro. Uh, we got it out the mud, bro. Like, until I pass out, that song was out for two years before y'all even knew about it. Yeah. Bro, there's no more pain as an artist than to give your soul to a lot of people. Bro, the first week I put out until I passed out, I done been to everybody's show. I done supported everybody. Dog, iTunes was out. And I remember putting out that song, and you know you got to wait them two months for that check come, you know? Mm -hmm. Boy, that first check from TuneCore, Boy, that first check from Distro Kid, I remember just counting the counting the looking at the calendar like, ooh, 60 days coming up. Boy, that first until I pass out check, eleven dollar and fifty four cent. Something, bro. I looked at how many checks I had in my phone to my bro. We love you so much. <laughs> Y'all lied to me. Right, <laughs> y'all ain't tell the truth, <laughs> bro. Didn't it tell you what city they live in? Yeah, well, I only had three sales from my city. Mm. I called my mama, told her I don't love her no more. <laughs> Changed my last name on my daddy. <laughs> told him we ain't, we ain't in. Broke up with my wife. <laughs> you ain't fine because I bought three of them myself. <laughs> now nah, let me stop messing with y'all. <laughs> Left my wife, got a divorce. <laughs> my new wife that God blessed me with. Hey, Hallelujah. Let me stop. Let me stop. Let me stop. <laughs> hey, man. Hey, but seriously though, the pain and then to then to one day be at work. Making twelve dollars and fifty cents an hour, then somebody tapped me on the shoulder and be like, "Hey, bro, is it a reward for what? TDJ is looking for you. TDJ is looking for me, bro. He going crazy. He done tweeted about you ten times in a row in like the last hour. Mm. To now, people know who you are. Bro, it's an honor." And it's because you were excellent at something. Jesus was excellent at ministry. But no matter how excellent he was, no matter what he was going through, he never missed an opportunity to show compassion on the crowd and to minister to them. And if we ever forget that, then we're in trouble. If we ever forget that, if we forget to have compassion on them, then we're in trouble. Right. And as I was preparing these thoughts tonight and I was preparing like, God, what do they need to hear? And God dropped this in my spirit. And I'm like, this is a reminder to me. And so today I was like, man, you know what, God, like. What are the felt needs of my community? And we have to ask ourselves that often. Because the felt needs change. And no matter what we do, and this is what I love about Christian rap. And you could fact check me. You could argue with me. You, I challenge you to check me. I really feel like in my heart that Christian rap is one of the purest, most holy forms of, of entertainment on the planet. God, it's almost like unless you are real about him, he will not let you come up in this thing. Mm. Mm. Bruh. And I tell this story often. Like, bro, I was, um, my life was touched, bro. My life was changed by like, bro, my life was changed by people that were serious about the gospel. Regardless if they learned it wrong, regardless what they did, regardless of what, but they were serious about the gospel. 
my life was changed because I was working the booth. I was selling somebody CDs in 07. And, you know, I was working at Best Buy and man, people would come in Best Buy and on what CD they came in for. You was going to leave with the truth. You was going to leave with Lecrae. You was going to leave with Christian rap in your basket. Because yeah. <laughs> I worked at Best Buy. And I'll never forget, I was selling CDs for another artist that was opening for them. And I just saw these guys on stage and the truth, Lecrae, Fanatic was there, Ambassador was there. All these guys were there. And after the show, they saw me cleaning up the table. And these guys, I just saw them on stage and they stopped by my table and they said, hey, bro, what's up? What you do? Oh, I sell CDs for so-and-so. You do music? Yeah, I rap as well. How you know you say it? Oh, man, I know I'm saved. I feel it in my heart, man. You know, I boo, boo, wop, 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 wop. Man, I know I'm saved, man. You know what I'm saying? Like, I feel do, 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 do. Man, you hungry? bro? they took me out to eat with them, bro. And when I went out to eat with them, I was the center of attention, and they drilled me about the gospel. Mm. They drilled me about the gospel. And then they challenged me to study this. They challenged me to study history. They challenged me to know why I believe what I believe and to get a biblical foundation. This Lecrae, the truth, fanatic, ambassador, show Baraka. They didn't know me. They may, and this is what's so crazy. They probably did this so much they don't even remember. And what they accomplished was a, a hand, was the unadulterated hand of God on their lives because they did something that's impossible. And I believe that unless your ministry is that strong, God won't let you prosper in Christian rap. Yeah. He'll let you be faking every other. He'll let you be fake as a pastor. He'll let you be faking CCM. Boy, you can't be faking this, boy. Yeah. Right. He won't let you. <laughs> and then you see ministry like Brian Trejo. Boy, that boy moving numbers, but he, he got a ministry. I feel like mm -hmm. as a Christian rapper, God's hand has still protected this form. Like, God ain't really letting nobody move the world because hip-hop is such an aggressive form. Like, people will challenge you. And it's one of the, it's one of the purest places where you can still do ministry. Um, I want y'all to go to Psalms uh, 40 and 8 and somebody read that for me. Uh, 40 and 8. Yep. Okay. Okay, Kevin. 1K got two phones, one for the plug and one for the load. <laughs> Hallelujah. Psalm 40 and 8. <clears throat> what verse you be reading from? I read from New. Um, it don't matter. All right. All right. <clears throat> I desire to do your will, my God. Your law is within my heart. This is, this is the writer. You know, this is a psalm of David. And David's like, man, I delight to do your will, my God. And your instructions, your instruction is deep within me. In other words, there's a desire, a yearning to do the will of God. As a Christian rapper, you have to have that. Like, you have to have that. You got to have a desire to do the will of God. And then I, as I read this, he says, and your instruction is deep within me. Because it's not just a desire to do the will of God, but I understand what you want from me. Because I have met so many people that I do believe love God and 
and and want to do right by God, but have no freaking clue of who God is. They don't have a biblical worldview. Like I just had a talk with an artist um, probably a couple of days ago. And just by being in community with this person, uh, we were talking and this was reason. I've known this dude for like two years and we've been talking, we kick it, we homeboys. And this is why community is important. My man asked me, and this is really what he asked me. We were just talking one day and he was like, hey, bro, you ever thought about like who, because Mary was God, mom. God is Jesus' dad. Who was Jesus' granddad? And when he asked me that, I was like, what do you mean? He's like, who you think made God? And I was like, I paused for a second. I had to catch myself because I was about to crack a joke. And then I was about to attack him. But then I said, that's a good question. Well, God wasn't created. God is. He was. Like, he moves outside of time. Like, okay, let me share with you the lineage of Jesus because David was the was the great 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 grandfather of of Jesus through the lineage of Mary. There were there were over 40 generations between Jesus being born, like from Abraham to Jesus, over 40 generations. And um let me share with you how Jesus came about and why he's here and and I really had to break down the foundational beliefs of this of this brother who serves in ministry, who I believe loves God, but has no clue of who God is. So you have to delight in God, but you also have to have his instructions in you. Right. And so when we read the Psalm of David, he says, I delight to do your will, my God, and your instruction is deep within me. And as we search the Gospels. We see so many examples of Jesus doing ministry. Um, if we go to uh, Matthews uh, 15 and 29, it says, moving on uh, from there, Jesus passed along the Sea of Galilee. He went up to the mountain and sat there and a large crowd came to him, including the lame, the blind, the crippled, those unable to speak and many others. They put them at his feet and he healed them so that the crowd was amazed when they saw those unable to speak, talking, the crippled, restored, the lame, walking in the blind, seeing, and they gave glory to God of Israel, right? And then here we, here's that word again, 32, Jesus called his disciples and he says, I have compassion on the crowd because they've already stayed with me three days and have nothing to eat. How many of us have thought about how hungry people... I'm going to be honest. This blew my mind because I'm like, bro, if you can't walk and you can't see and you come to me and Jesus heal you, I ain't going to be like, now you want to go to Popeye's? Like, what? I'm going to just be thinking it's over. But he was looking for ways to minister to them. And he thought about their appetites. And he says, I don't want to send them away hungry. Otherwise, they may collapse on the way home. The disciples said to him, where could we get enough bread in this desolate place to feed such a crowd? How many loaves do you have, Jesus? And we know how the story goes. But once again, he had compassion. And so I just want to challenge you that are hearing this message. Do you have compassion on the people that God is giving you an audience for? Do you think about not just what they need, like, because there is a need for young people to have something to do. That is a felt need of our community, which, you know, throwing events, doing stuff like that. I believe there, there is a felt need for an alternative. People that are diabetic that can't, you know, can't process sugar. We give them diet soda because that's what some of them need. 
So there is a need, but I asked one KQ, what are the felt needs of the rap community right now? And I've asked Canton Jones and I'm going to have conversation with you guys because I was asking God and in my years of my years of age, it wasn't until I was 37 years old that I actually sat down and I pondered and I said, OK, God, what are the felt needs of my community? Because I know what I want to give them, but I, I never asked them. And one case said to me, he said, I believe that people don't collaborate enough in this industry. It's almost like they look at it like, man, if I do a song with the wrong person, it's going to kill my career. Man, I got songs back in them days when, when boy, before y'all knew who I was, boy, look here. Boy, I got, when I was doing songs to pay them bills and take care of my family, boy, I got songs with, with people that I get ashamed about every time I see them come up. <laughs> every time I drop something, boy, they redrop them songs. <laughs> they redrop them. <laughs> Bro, some of them songs sound like them boy made them songs on the iPhone three. <laughs> but yes, I pop the tray. <laughs> hey, sound like them boy had two cassette players side by side. Hey, hold on, yeah. hey, I don't know nothing about that though. That boy, them them was the good old days. Them was good old days. Hey, <laughs> listen, man. Before I blew up, boy, I did a song with Peace on. <laughs> boy, that boy recorded that thing on a on in a in a tin can. Now let me stop messing with that. That is the tin can. The tin can. Hey, but for, for real though, bro. Like, but honest to God, it ain't messed up nothing, man. It ain't cost me nothing. Like, and I thought about what One K said, and I never thought about that. Like, Christian rappers don't collaborate with each other. They like you can't just call nobody and be like, "Hey, can we do a song?" It's always like, "Let me pray about it. Let me talk to my <laughs> bishop about it." Hey, let me let's before I do a song, I like to I like to spend a year learning. I, like what? Who? Who in their mind? Like this has actually happened to me. I called somebody for a feature one time, and they was like, "I want to put my foot under your table. I want to talk to your wife." <laughs> I want to talk to my wife. I want to put a foot <laughs> under your table. This happened to me. Lord have mercy, but no. You want to talk to my hurt. wife for what? And I just asked him, I was like, why you want to talk to my wife? Because, you know, I want to see if she's cool. Because once I meet her, I know I can tell about your ministry. Oh, and Lord. I was like, and I was honest with the brother. I was like, well, bro, I'm going to be honest with you. Um, I don't want to be your friend. I just want to make a song. <laughs> hey. Right. That's real. That's real. That's too real. No, I was honest. That's too real. Yes. I was like, I don't want to be your friend. I just want to make a song. I just want to pay you for a song. And then... Honestly, like we could text each other, but I have so many friends right now. I can't manage the friendships that I have. So I don't want to be your friend. I just like your music. And when I said that, he was like, no, nah, I can do that. I can respect that. And I text him back a couple times and he was like, bro, I don't really move like that. And I was like, well, I, I respect that, you know, like. I don't want our wives to meet or, you know, like, I don't want to be your friend. I just like your music. And when one case said that, it reminded me, like, you know how terrified a Christian rapper would be to share that with somebody? Like, who really, like, who really after 35 just, like, got time to just, you know, if I become your friend, praise God. But like, you get what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah. Like, <laughs> yeah. You know, I want to be friends with everybody, but you know, like, we're not gonna talk every day unless you know y'all don't even live in my city. Like, right. You know what I'm saying? I got, I'm a, I got a full time job. Like, 
You know what I'm saying? So, but when one case said that, it made me think and it dawned on me. And I was like, God, I feel like you've called me to be an advocate to Christian rappers because the one thing that you did allow me to do was um, might not have done everything perfect, but I kept a lot of my money. Mm. And I see a lot of artists um, not keeping their money. And, you know, the way that I live, you know, I don't have to be the hottest artist in the world. I don't have to be those things like with what I did, I retained ownership of my music. I didn't give my publishing to anybody. Um, and now I live a pretty decent lifestyle that's comfortable for me and my wife. And my bills are paid through the residuals of what I've accomplished. Um, I'm savvy in YouTube revenue. I'm savvy in certain things. And so I've been lending that to artists. Like I will call artists. Like I'll notice certain artists. I'm like, oh, you're not collecting on that video. And I've reached out to some of you guys and been like, hey, look, uh, how what's going on with this? And and I just plant the seed. I don't put no pressure on anybody. I just be like, mm -hmm, probably losing some that you're just not conscious of. And so that is what I wanted to lend to my community because I want to help it. But God, I was challenged by the Holy Spirit to ask, what are the felt needs? And, and I learned this. Every time I ask that question, I learn something new. Meet the felt needs of your community. Number two, have compassion on the people coming to see you. Minister to them well. Go above and beyond, not because it's good for your career or it's good for anything, but because you have a desire yeah. to please God. Keep his instructions near to you so that you don't end up doing something for God that one day you get to the gate and God says and Jesus says to you, I don't know you because you did a lot of stuff for me that I did not instruct you to do. I remember one time um, this this uh, woman who, you know, she wanted to manage me and I didn't know her from Adam. I didn't know this person. I did a show in Mississippi, literally took a picture with this person. She was like, yeah, I manage people. I was like, oh, that's so awesome. And I just left. And that was the end of it. And. Um, and man. I just remember like um, going back to that city and and I had this person named Mississippi. I called her Mississippi mom. She was amazing. She was a good helper. And this other woman from Mississippi that I guess wanted to manage me as well, too. She just started doing a whole bunch of stuff for me that I didn't know about. And so my my mentor, Mississippi pop, Mississippi mom brought me back. And this person came to one of my shows and she was like, I have, and this is how exactly how she came. And she was like, Uncle Reese, you remember me? I was like, no, nah, not really. She was like, you don't remember me? You know, we talked about management. I was like, I vaguely remember. She says, I have called over 1,200 churches on your behalf. I have a list of churches that are looking to book you right now. Where is she at? Yeah. No, what? No, listen. <laughs> listen. Listen. They want to they wanna book you right now. And so me, you thinking what I'm thinking. I'm like, oh, pray God. Well, you done called 1,200 churches. They want to book me. So, I, you know, me, I'm like, man, 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 he didn't let us discuss this. Or, hey, you got some get up and go. I like that. So while I'm at, I'm at Outback Steakhouse and my team, we sitting with them. And she like, and we like, so yeah, what's the school? So this is our booking. This is how it does. This is how much I come out for. And, you know, if you can call them. And, and she cut me off. Me at sentence. Oh, oh. Well, what we do is a little different. <laughs> mm. And this is exactly yeah. what she did. See, we don't do, we don't do industry. We do ministry. <laughs> okay. And so I'm listening. I'm like, Okay. And she's like, these shows I'm booking for you, they're not paid. 
<laughs> um, they're not paid, but I know that's not important to you because you don't do that's not a industry. You do ministry. <laughs> and she would literally lift her head like this every time. <laughs> and I was just like, well, man, Actually, it's it's a little bit important to me that I that I am paid for my time. I'm like, how many shows? Do you? She's like, oh, I got I got 30 shows ready to go. None of them are paid, but these are real opportunities. And I was like, ma'am, I'm gonna be honest. Um, I I'm gonna have to pass. And this person sat there and was like, well, wait a minute, I've been doing all this stuff for you and. You know, you could at least say thank you. You didn't say. And she sent me this email. You didn't say thank you and all this. And, you know, and you know, that you my, me and my husband sat there in your face and we thought you were about ministry. And, you know, it saddens me to da -da 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 -da, boom, boom, boom. And I'm like, ma'am, you did a whole bunch of stuff for me that I never asked you to do, nor did I want you to do. Right. Mm -hmm. And if we're not careful, we will get to heaven and this will be the conversation we have with the Lord. <laughs> you did a whole bunch of stuff for me that I don't want you to do. Yeah. Mm. You're going to be like, Jesus, man, I got everybody in the club screaming Jesus in the club. You know, they they twerking like this, <laughs> telling their homeboy to hold me up. But in between that song, they saying Jesus in the club. And Jesus like, I don't care if they say my name in the club. <laughs> Man, you know, when I did that song, everybody got one earring that had a J on it. And I started <laughs> that trend. And get my charger real quick for my phone died. Hold up. Yeah. <laughs> oh, oh, my going in. oh, my goodness, bro. J earring. <laughs> he just took a shot at my earring. <laughs> <laughs> he taking a lot of shots. We have to understand this. Keep his instructions near to you. So that when you're moved with compassion, we have some type of foundation so that we're not going rogue and not even know it. There's nothing more dangerous to me than a person that sincerely loves God, but is sincerely going to hell. Because they typically, it's nothing, it's nothing, there's nothing more dangerous to me than somebody who has good intentions. I mean, you really had good, you really had great intentions. And if we search throughout history, most of the people who killed a lot of people, they really had a good idea in their mind. <laughs> but they really was like, I'm going to create a race with no sickness. And all I have to do is kill everybody that don't got blonde hair and blue eyes. It's going to be good. No, nah, this ain't good. So... Be what I talked about today. Jesus ministered well. He had compassion on the people. I don't ever want you to take what you have for granted and feel like you don't still have to think about people. Go before the people. Go have one of those experiences that one day somebody can talk about. That transformed my life. And I'm be real. A lot of times I'll hear stuff and I'll give people a pass because I remember that moment. Mm. Those are the moments that impact heaven. Like I've been to every unashamed concert in the world, but when I talk about my memories, I don't even remember the concert. I was like, yeah, they were fine. But I remember that. Minister to the people, have compassion. Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Lord God, we thank you um, for you tonight. We thank you for the example of your son. Lord, we thank you for just allowing us to be real 
to be honest, to, to love people that are unlovable, Lord God, to, to reach a demographic that is seriously in danger. Not just danger of losing you, but dangerous, dangerously involved in ignorance. And it's they so crazy, ignorance is normal now. And we get to impact that. So thank you for choosing us. Put it in everybody's heart on this phone that they were chosen to do this so they can understand what is before them and never allow us to forget about the people that you've called us to and the importance of directing them back to you through our lives. Lord, we love you. And in Jesus name we pray. Amen. Amen. And amen. 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 Yeah. Hallelujah. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Wait, hold up, hold up. Now, if you've been blessed by this, so I, I need a thousand dollars for each of y'all right now. <laughs> hey, dollar sign one K P H E. No, no, that ain't that ain't the right one. Hold up. <laughs> <laughs> hey, but now, nah, hey, but you were speaking fact though, like, cause it's like it's a lot of people who you know, who really, who, who really like talk about the word, but really don't stand on it type thing. And then like, I just noticed one thing you said that, that stood out. It's like, once you really get the word in you and once you really move, start moving like that and have compassion about the people you ministering to and talking to, you know what I'm saying? It's really going to be, it, it, you're going to desire to do that. You know what I'm saying? You're really going to have a passion to do that. And it's just going to be authentic and real, you know what I'm saying, by that time. So, it's really, you know what I'm saying? That's really the mission anyway, you know what I'm saying? To be compassionate about, you know, bringing people back to him, you know what I'm saying? In a real way. So, you know what I'm saying? That, that's one thing that definitely stood out to me for sure. Yeah. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hey, when you said that, right, you know what's better than passing out turkeys on Thanksgiving? What it is. Passing out turkeys every day. I thought you were about to say passing gas on Thanksgiving. <laughs> that, ain't, that ain't helpful. Uh, that ain't expedient. But nah, seriously, like you know, meet the felt needs of the community that you're trying to start a food kitchen for them, man. Start a food bank. You utilize your influence to to create things that people need, and not just people that love Jesus. Like everybody got to eat, though. Yeah, that's for real. That that's what had been on my heart too. Like God had really been uh pretty much dealing with me on that level. So it's crazy like that you saying all this because he was just like telling me uh love on my people, you know what I'm saying? Just love on my people and pretty much I had been wanting to uh go out and just uh you know make these chili plates and take them out just you know nothing big and just go out and serve them, you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So that's what that's what we going to do, man. I like, I like that. And do do the small, but I want you to still imagine the big. Yeah. Like take them chili plates out there because while you taking them chili plates out there, you're gonna mess around and meet the person that can that can really help you establish things. And that's what um the thing that I've been able to do. I've been able to establish things that are still around that have kept me when I'm going to just be, have kept me when, you know, I just don't feel like doing shows, you know, like it's good to still do music, but the things that I've established while I was doing music, as I get older, I notice that my passions sometimes change. And mm -hmm. because of what I've established, those things are still around. Like, you know, I don't always feel like, I don't always feel like rapping and jumping around on stage and doing backflips, you know? And so that's when I praise God for the things I've established that don't necessarily require as much passion or energy. They just hear. So, um, but I think that like, especially with rappers, we in the hood, like honor that, like them people got to eat. Them people need clothes, you know, we got to stop gun violence. Like there's so many things that can be established that, uh, that organizations would definitely support coming from someone like us. Like you see, we have those opportunities to be on like 2k and the NFL is using us right now because 
there is a need for artists that have never disrespected women publicly. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So like there's a need for people like us to establish food banks and and uh and and um and food banks, clothing shelters where we give away clothes and and just basic needs like you know my church they 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 open the center that other people pay for that if a if a single mother comes in there they ain't got to pay for oil change oh that's dope yeah if somebody want to move we got box trucks that we ain't paid for hey if you want to move just call the church we'll show up at your house and we'll help you move like yeah. that's what i'm saying imagine it imagine it functioning without you do the grunt work, but imagine it functioning without you. Mm. Make the make the blessing work for the blessing. Yeah, I thought about that. I'm like, Nino Brown get these boy turkey once. Why get these people turkeys every Tuesday every and Thursday? Day. <laughs> And if you come knock on the door, I give you a turkey every day. I literally give you a turkey every day. And I don't pay for none of the turkey. A truck bring the turkeys to me. I just put them in the freezer and wait. Yeah. So, yeah, just be thinking like that. Search me. Blessed to be a blessing. Yeah, yeah. So like I say, man, um, I'm here for y'all. Y'all got my number. If y'all got any questions, um, I don't know everything. And I tell you if I don't know it, but if I know it, y'all got access to it.